Writer. P-H. Studios. Studios. I've been writing every day. Okay. I'm just not sure what I want to put out there yet, and I don't know what kind of style I want to go with. Obviously, I was a country singer, and uh, that that kind of killed me because I've always been a fan of Southern rock. I'm more of a rock and roll guy. You know? mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, my voice allows me to be a, a country singer. Thank you for answering, for asking this question. Uh, I write every day, and it's kind of like one of those things, and I don't think it's writer's block, but every time I do something – I kind of like pack it up and put it away uh, instead of actually going forward with it. And Mm -hmm. just in the last, like about, I guess during COVID, just Mm -hmm. in the last couple of months, Mm -hmm. uh, probably about six of them, we've come up with some songs and, uh, and I'm hoping to, to release some new stuff. And so thank you so much for asking that. It's very great. One thing your fans expect a new album. (laughs) <laughs> I see what you're saying there. Uh, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I uh, I, I got to be honest with you, and I wish I could tell you an answer. So, so tell us tell us about your musical influences. My music influence. Uh, my music influences never went well with Sony or with uh, the record label that I was on uh, because people don't realize that when you're a country singer, you want people, you, you, your influences should be mm-hmm. George Strait or Garth Brooks. And my music influences are Alice in Chains and Elton John. Mm-hmm. And I was the music and Elton John wrote the music, but it wasn't that it was, you know, Jerry Cantrell wrote the music for Alice in Chains mm-hmm. and Bernie Toppin wrote the music for Elton John, but I mm-hmm. love Alice in Chains and Elton John. And if you can mm-hmm. mix that together, that would be me. Okay, have you tried uh, video karaoke here in the Philippines? <laughs> uh, I have not. No, uh, no, no, no. Video and karaoke. <laughs> oh, they- well, a lot of karaoke. We did a lot of karaoke back at the stages, man, when we were done. Yeah, we had a, we had a really good time doing karaoke. Especially when the guest stars would come in, some of the guest actors and stuff like that, who I believe you have on the show. Uh, they're they're absolutely outstanding, and uh, they can tell you more stories about that. They can embarrass me if I, if you talk to them, they'll tell you stories about me. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Christian. Oh, my pleasure, man. Mr. Robbie. Thank you, Sir Robert. Maybe you should do a cover of uh, Lone Wolf. What <laughs> <laughs> happened okay. in the series? <laughs> Never part of. All right, here we go. Here we go. I know. Oh wow! You're giving us a treat right there. Thank you. Um. <laughs> Uh, Miss Tessa is up next. Yes, thanks, Robbie. Hi again. Hello. Um, my question's for Mr. Devlin. Um, well, thank you as always, of course, for having a special place, um, you know, for the Philippines in your heart. And um, I, I'm sure you know that our tourism um, agency and, of course, our national film agency, they've also, um, you know, they've set up like incentives for uh, producers from other parts of the world to actually come to the Philippines not only as a location for their movies, but also, you know, as a film hub, um, not, not only to, you know, sort of uh, tap into our talents, but also the talents of our technical, you know, technical side, t- technical workers of, um, of um, the Philippine movie industry. I was just wondering if you did have a great experience shooting and uh, producing Almost Paradise over here, um, if you could put in a good word for us uh, to your counterparts all over the world, what would you tell them about us here in the Philippines? Why would it be paradise to shoot their movies or their TV shows over here? Well, first of all, I, I tell everybody it's horrible because I want to I want to corner the market. I don't want anyone going but me. So I, I just <laughs> lie to everybody and just say, oh, it's awful. You don't want to go. Now, the truth of the matter is, um, before we even came, uh, we had the privilege of distributing in the United States, um, or actually around the world, uh, Hannah's movie, uh, 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 Transit. And that gave us a window into the evolution of what's going on in the Philippines, in the world of cinema. And uh, Hannah's movie got us so excited about it. And then we started doing more research and, and we started seeing uh, uh, you know, all, all these amazing actors, all these amazing films, these amazing uh, cinematographers and and production designers. And, and we realized that in the last 20 years, uh, the Philippines has really raised its game 
as far as the quality of talented people, both in front of and behind the camera. So when we made the decision to go to the Philippines, I wasn't really worried about being able to get the quality level because you guys have it. You know, I think the only thing that's that's really holding back the Philippines is that it hasn't been exposed to the rest of the world. You know, and the more people see, I mean, it's going to it's going to be it's going to be a huge industry there, you know, and and, you know, uh, Almost Paradise has only just now started to play around the world and everywhere it plays. I get inundated with e emails and DMs and, and t tweets from people going, I had no idea the Philippines was like that. So, I, you know, I think that it's it's going to change the perception of the Philippines as, as a place to go. And I already know it's changing the perception of the talent level, both in front of and behind the camera. Thank you very much. And we really do hope you um, do think about uh, Almost Paradise season two, because we'd love to show more of what we have here in the Philippines to the rest of the world. Thank you. <laughs> we're, we're, very, we're very optimistic that there's going to be a season two. Oh, and, and we'll know for sure within the next couple of weeks. But, you know, the show is performing enormously well everywhere in the world that it shows and uh, right now we're on imdb in the united states and we're one of the most popular shows on the service so Yay. we we feel very very optimistic at the moment that there will be a second season and if there is we will definitely be back in the philippines thank you very much um for my next question i'd like to ask mr kane um you know we there's no question about your coolness because you wouldn't be a lead of a uh, you know an action series if you weren't but we just wanted to know if you could rate art acuña's coolness what would that <laughs> be that's a good question <laughs> <laughs> all right here you go here you go i'm gonna rate everybody's coolness for you right now <laughs> art comes is a, art comes in as a 10 and i'll tell you why i don't know if you saw the fight scene between uh with his fight scene and stuff like that. I didn't know the cat could fight. Um, I don't, uh, sorry about that. I think something just clicked off. Uh, I don't know if he, I didn't know he could fight. He's just the epitome of coolness, the way he does stuff, the way he holds his gun. And he thinks a long time on this kind of stuff. He thinks a long time on it and he ends up getting it done. And the coolness of art goes a little bit above 10. Now I'm wow. going to rate now I'm going to rate Noni. Noni is right around a nine and a half. And the only thing <laughs> I have of Noni is that he's just such a nice guy in real life. He's so nice. He's just, I mean, when you think of, when you think of the, the chief of police there, it's unbelievable. He's just unbelievable when it comes to that role. And that 0.5 is only because I know him in real life and he's so damn nice. It's ridiculous. Now, Sam, Sam, Samantha gets, you know, it's, she gets a 10 because she really hasn't done a lot of stuff in her life. She came into this role and nailed it. And I don't think we could have picked a better actress at the time to do this role. And I've told her that so many times and it's just, she, you know, it's, it's ridiculous, man, to work with her and all this other kind of stuff. She gets a 10. Um, Sess. Sess is, I mean, like <laughs> right around a seven and she adds three more to be a 10 just because of her attitude and what she did. And I love her more than anyone else in the entire world. I just loved working with her. Anytime I got a script and it said, it's you and her, I was just like, oh my God, thank God she's back and we're going to do this stuff. And I think that actually kind of helped make the show, to be honest with you. She's the only one that really knew Alex as Alex. And so, you know, it's just, just hands these the the filipino actors that we got for this show it's unbelievable the talent that we that we got and uh and i just i, I want to make that really known to everybody else it's just we got really 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 lucky because i don't think anybody knew that there was this much talent out there and there's so much talent it's ridiculous thank you for that question thank you thank you too Thank you, Miss Tessa. Beautiful question right there. Now, let's talk about coolness. Um, and one of the things which makes this show really, really cool are the shots. I want to ask uh, Director Pao, 
Uh, and uh, Sir Diego, can you tell us, uh, can you take us through the process of selecting the shots, the great montage? I mean, every scene, uh, every scene is so beautifully uh, created and uh, selected. Direct Pao? Oh, hi, everyone. Hey, hey what's up? <laughs> I didn't even know you were here. What's up, my man? It's so good to see you. Yeah, so to answer that question, it's it's really about collaborating with the directors. I mean, uh, the shots are. I mean, we choose the shots because we have prep, and there's proper prep time, which is which is what was great with this show, I guess, compared to other things that we usually, you know, the, our process here. So there's a lot of prep, and like you know, directors like Francis or Mark Roskin and all of them, Hannah, Irene, and Dan, they would give me shot lists, and everyone is so collaborative on this, you know, and even working with these actors, like top notch. I mean, the, the level of professional professionalism, like I learned from Christian with the camera, everything. So every, the actors work with you, the directors work with you to get that shot and then to light the, the beautiful sets of Digo. It, it was just amazing. So yeah, I mean, that, that's the process basically. Rodrigo, do you want to add on to that one? How do you how do you prepare these uh, magnificent sets? Uh, just to back up on what Pao just said, actually, we were given, I think, ample time to really think about it and like execute it like the way everyone should think it should work. But I think it's also like competition between me and Pao. It's like I can't come up with something that's not good, and he can't light it up. Not, you know, so it's it, it was a healthy competition between the two of us. But yeah, above all things, it's really like how the process made us actually, you know, work our way through so that we don't, you know, mess it up. Well, uh, just like what we mentioned earlier, uh, in the set, we got the best of the best, right? And before we uh, go back to Justin for, uh, for the questions, I just want to ask Sir Francis, because one of my favorite episodes is episode three because it featured food. Did you get to try out the balut? I got to tell you, I'm going to give, for coolness, I'm going to add one more point for um, Christian Kane because he <laughs> the balut with full force. Oh. I, and I'm ashamed to admit that I did not try it, but season two, I'm in. Me and Christian are going to sit there with tequila or whatever it takes. I'm going to do it. I didn't do it season one, but I'm going to do it. Looking forward for that one. <laughs> I ate five of them, man. Five of them. Five, five? Five of them. Five takes. I man. asked him, too. I asked him, does he want the substitute, like the panoy? And he was like, no, man. I want the real thing. So he got it. <laughs> it was amazing. And it's uh, it shows. Oh, that's why your knees are so strong. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to you, Justin, with those questions. Other things we won't talk about, but yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to read the question from uh, Miss Dina Ventura of the Daily Tribune and uh, Vanessa Balbuena of the Freeman uh, newspaper. Um, their question is uh, kind of similar. Um, for Christian, um, what do you like most about the Philippines and what are your fondest uh, memories in Cebu? Um, I, uh, to answer that question, I'll, I'll, I will be very direct and to the point. I love the people that I worked with there. I love the professionalism of them. I love the wanting to make art that was in their bones and was in their blood and then came out, you know, with what we did. And uh, I just, I just loved working with the people there. I've never been a foreigner, you know, that's usually we're the Americans. We, we, you know, we're in America. You guys come here to do this stuff. I was sent there and I'm the only guy there. And I was greeted with open arms. I was greeted with open arms everywhere I looked. I had open arms. And I can't say, I can't say enough about the people that accepted me to be in their group and do this kind of a project, man, to make the Filipino people look really great. And also to show that this backdrop that we had was unbelievable. It was it's, it's some of the most beautiful places in the world. And we got to show that. And it literally became an actor. The Philippines, where we filmed, it became one of the guys on the call sheet. It was an actor in the movie. And you see it. And so I'm so thankful for that. 
Um, yeah, the Philippines has more than 7,000 islands and Cebu is just one of them. How do you find, uh, particularly Cebu, how do you find the place? I, I love Cebu. I loved, I love Cebu. We, we, we were in Mactan a lot of the time and, um, and I just absolutely loved it, man. It was, uh, it was very beautiful. I went, you know, I, I got my diving uh, license there. It was incredible. And uh, it just, it's, it's, I think it was, rated, am, I, am I wrong to say that Cebu was rated the number one airport in the world? Uh, I, I don't know. You have to check your, your, your facts on this, but I think it was like the number one most beautiful airport in the world that everybody got to fly into. A lot of actors came from Manila. So they got to land in Cebu and then, you know, we took them to where they were going and come to see us and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, Seth can speak more to this, but I think that it was literally one of the most beautiful airports in the world is in Cebu. So there you go. Thank you, Christian. Uh, we're happy to hear that you really enjoyed Cebu. Um, the second question of Vanessa from The Free Man, it's a local newspaper in Cebu. Her second question is, did you really, um, how did you honestly find the Bakasi or the, yeah, the, the local... The eel. The eel, yes. The, the real eel dish. dish. Yeah. Well, I can't, I can't, I gotta be honest with you. I can't consider myself a foodie, which I do consider myself without trying everything. And uh, it wasn't it wasn't bad at all. It was one of the best soups I've ever had. They actually made it. The person on the set made it. I can't remember her name right now. God bless her. And she made the soup. She made the soup at home before. I ate it. I had it. I ate a lot of it. I didn't know you weren't supposed to eat the bones. And so I just crunched it up and ate it. But uh, it was one of the best soups I've ever had in my entire life. And I actually asked for more. And I actually took a cup on the way home. That's good to hear. And Robbie, uh, we're down to our last set of questions. And it will come from Leah Ocampo of whatsup.ph. Hello. Hi. So this one is for Mr. Kane. So the chemistry between you and your Filipino co-actors is commendable. You guys look so natural together. You work so well. And we understand that you guys did like a chemistry reading, reading in pre-production, but it's still different when you're finally on set to shoot, the camera is rolling, you guys are in your costume. So do you still remember the first time shooting a scene with them? Can you share to us what was it like? I sure can. Um, you know, it, it was funny because I met, I met Sam uh, early in the process and I met her in Manila. And then I really pined for her. I wanted her to get this role because I, I thought there was something there. Dean did as well. She got the role. She came in, she was exactly what we thought she would be. You know what I mean? She was, she was really, she, she, she read everything. She studied everything. Me and Sam would go over stuff sometimes, you know, and do all this stuff. And she was just perfect for the role. She had a toughness about her that I don't think anyone else could have had. You know what I mean? There was a toughness about her in the beginning. There was a toughness about us in the finish. It was crazy, man. And she was the perfect person for this role. I don't think they could have cast a better person anywhere in the world. I just think she's that good. Art. With art, I literally was telling Dean, and Dean can back this up. In the, I was like, stop auditioning people. We've got the guy. Art was in there on the audition. I was like, this is the dude. This is the dude. And I'm like, and I'm like I looked at Dean. I'm like, no. And he was like, Kane, calm down. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> it's like, there's no reason to look anywhere else. And so that was how it was. Now with Noni, I didn't know Noni was coming in and I saw Noni when he came and he did his, he did his work. And I'm just like, my gosh, man, this dude is the epitome of what you want. He's, he's, he's got, he's got politics on his side. He's doing this, he's doing that. It was crazy, man. And it, I just, I just feel like this thing was expertly casted and I have to give that back to Dean Devlin, who by the way, saw every single person coming in. I met Sess there i met sophia I, I met i met all these people says was like got the role like right off the bat it was, i met all these people every single star that came in to this show that, that was literally a star did it on their own they came in dean said yes because he saw the talent and i was just mesmerized every week that the, the, the talent we got and so i'm i'm very grateful for that okay thank you so much and let me just say to Mr. Dean Devlin, Almost Paradise is such a great series. It has the good old action scenes that everyone loves. And there is a lot of Filipino representation going on because 
more often than not, Southeast Asians, you know, they lack portrayal in international shows and films because usually when you say Asian stories or Asian, Asian shows, they center mostly around East Asians. But this one, you have like a Filipino crew, a Filipino cast. It, it's shot here in the Philippines. So this one is, is very good. Again, congratulations to everyone involved in the show. Thank you. Well, and, and I'll tell you, Filipinos around the world are touched by this. You know, I, I, I'm Filipino and I grew up in the United States, but, you know, in the United States, the only thing they know about the Philippines is Amelda Marcus's shoes and Manny Pacquiao. And that's about all they know. And every and the representation they've seen is is usually poverty porn. So we're getting so many heartfelt letters and calls and DMs from from Filipinos here and, and around the world who are saying, you know, that they feel seen. And, you know, in, in, in the United States now, we're, we're going through a, a very difficult time where there's a rise in hate crimes against Asians in general. And, you know, to have this show where we're really changing minds and hearts, it, it adds, it, it adds a, a sense of pride in making the show, not just for the Filipinos in the Philippines, but for Filipinos everywhere to be able to say, hey, you know, this is much, even though this is a, a blue sky kind of crazy fun show, it captures the heart of why Filipinos are such wonderful and special people. Okay, thank you so much again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Leia. I think next to the word mabuhay, um, kapamilya is one word that uh, we should all remember because we, we feel that you guys developed a certain uh, bond already, this uh, sense of family, not just in the set, but it creates uh, your, your, your bond cuts across the screen. And we feel that. And we just want to thank you for giving us those wonderful scenes. Now, here's my million dollar question to Sir Dean and to Derek Ruel. Actually, Sir Dean and uh, RSB, what needs to happen in order for this wonderful series or wonderful franchise to have season two? Fingers crossed. You know, it, it's, it's, it's really, we're very close. You know, I really do think we're going to have an announcement in the next couple of weeks. But, you know, the, the thing that, that, that people can do is watch the show and tell their friends to watch the show. Because the, the great thing is when people see the show, the response has been just like nothing I've ever done before. I mean, I've never, I've done a lot of shows that were successful, but usually it's like one certain group likes it. Everybody seems to like Almost Paradise. It's crazy. I have, I, I run into older people who love it. I run into kids who love it. I run into married people, single people. It doesn't matter. People just seem to love the show when they see it. But a lot of people haven't heard about it. So I'd say the number one thing you could do is, is watch it. Tell your friends to watch it. All right. That is what we're going to do. Uh, Sir Rowell? Yes. Thank you for that, Dean. And yes, I agree. It's not a question of if. It's a question of when and of how soon. Um, so um, we really want to push through with it. And there will be, this is just the beginning of a very long, productive, creative journey with uh, Dean and Electric Entertainment. And because of that, I want to be the first uh, from this group to congratulate Dean and Christian for the amazing trailer of uh, Leverage Redemption. I uh, hope you guys <laughs> check it out. It'll be um, um, ABS will definitely promote this and support this because your kapamilyas, your family, it's out mm -hmm. July 9 on IMDb TV. And, uh, and um, I also wanted to share that most of the fan mails, because we have never received a negative feedback on this show. That's amazing. And, and that's what they say. That this show has brought them in the middle of a depressing pandemic the joy, the pride, the inspiration that they badly need. And uh, they say, can we have more of this? Can, uh, can we watch more of this kind of a show? And the second one is they want, they're so in love with Alex Walker. All the fan mail say, we want to see more of him, no more of him. Can we, um, and this is a testament to Christian's great talent and how well-written the character is. Um, for them to embrace him 
like as if it's Filipino, like as if it's a Filipino character. Um, and so I really wanted to take this chance to think uh, and to let Christian know of that. And for me to also thank Dean and Electric Entertainment um, for being so professional and being so patient uh, because, uh, like I always say, it wasn't a walk in the park. It was very challenging. But um, if you ask me what is my greatest memory of working with um, Dean and Electric, it is to witness what a world class showrunner is. And I've seen Dean work from the beginning. He has a complete command of the writing part, the, de the development part, the production, the post-production, down to down to international distribution and marketing. So this is what every showrunner should aspire to be, to have that kind of, of mastery and the depth of experience. And I really wanted to um, thank him for showing us the way and for, for being a role model and for uh, inspiring us to work harder. So again, to Dean and Electric, Francis, uh, Tish, everybody, um, Thank you. Obviously, we want to work with you guys again. Well, I do want to just also say uh, to, to, to Roel's point about the timing of it being seen in the Philippines. You know, I want to give a lot of the credit to Corey because contractually it wasn't supposed to go on for quite some time. And Corey called me and said, look, the Filipino people need this right now. Can, can we can we move up the date? Can we do it earlier? And just her passion about wanting to do something for the Filipino people was so moving. And, and we immediately said, of course, absolutely. We, we can definitely move the date up. And uh, uh, so I, I, I'm very grateful that, that, that they were able to get it out, you know, coming out of this, this cloud of this terrible year that we've all gone through around the world. It is a really good time to... to to be with your friends and family and, and laugh and cry and cheer and have fun with these amazing characters. On that note, Sir Dean, thank you so much for everything, for uh, trusting ABS-CBN to, to work with uh, the best the best in the world. Maraming maraming salamat po. To all the people uh, who are watching, to all of our friends from the media, Thank you for being right here. Uh, I just want to say thank you to Sir EJ Maliari, Direct Will, uh, Ro, Miss Mercy, Sir Digo, Sir Pao, Direct Irene, Direct Hannah, Direct Dan, uh, Direct Ruel. Maraming salamat po to Miss Sis, Sir Noni, Sir Art, Miss Samantha, to Miss Patricia, Sir Francis de la Torre, Mr. Dean, and Sir Christian, to more balutes, to more eels. <laughs> And uh, I just want to thank everyone. Oh, uh, okay. I just want to remind everyone that the next few episodes will be really, really awesome. Talagang another milestone achievement of ABS CBN and almost, an almost paradise. Please, um, let's all celebrate the triumph of Filipino talent all over the world. Maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga kapamilya media po natin ngayong hapon. Uh, naway. Tulad na sinabi nila kanina, ipakalat po natin ang galing ng Pilipino.